Hello and welcome to HelpYourMath.com. In this video, we're going to look at describing transformations of parent functions, well specifically their graphs. And we're going to focus on the six functions that we looked at in the previous video, linear functions, absolute value, quadratic, cubic, square root, and reciprocal. Before we get started on talking about how we might describe the transformations, let's just review what the parent functions are. So the six parent functions that we're going to focus on, we have our linear, that's f of x equals x, or y equals x. I kind of use y and f of x interchangeably, so bear with me on that. Quadratic, f of x equals x squared. Absolute value, f of x equals the absolute value of x. The cubic function, f of x equals x cubed. The square root function, f of x equals the square root of x. And lastly, the reciprocal function, which, whoops, it looks like I cut it off. That would be f of x equals 1 over x. That would be the reciprocal function. And what we want to do is we're describing the transformations, which we will talk more on the next slide. But we want to keep in mind some, I, or I like to keep in mind anyway, some key points on each function because that really helps me uh, determine whether there's some sort of stretch or shrink. So for our linear function, we have some, some key points might be 0, 0, 1, 1, negative 1, negative 1. That's the linear function. The quadratic function, some key points, 0, 0, right? 0, 0 actually plays a pretty common role in a lot of these functions. So 0, 0 here, that's that minimum point that we see on the quadratic, on the parent function. Um, so I'd like to keep that in mind. Also good to know is that 1, 1 and negative 1, 1 are on this. So that's going to help me describe if there's a stretch or a shrink. For the absolute value, we also have that bottom point, the vertex, at 0, 0. And this graph also has 1, 1 and negative 1, 1. The cubic function, we also have something special here going on at 0. Um, while this one's not a vertex, it does, you, know, you can see it kind of like shifts directions here. Some other key points on our cubic besides 0, 0, shockingly, we have 1, 1. But this one we have negative 1, negative 1. For our square root, the square root function starts at 0, 0, and it also contains the point 1, 1. 1, 1 is a very popular point. The reciprocal function, it does not have 0, 0, but if you look here at 0, 0, you can kind of see the graph kind of avoids, whoops, the graph kind of avoids the axes. So that's what we want to keep in mind here is where is the graph avoiding, right? So if we drew in a line here, you can see the graph looks like it's getting closer and closer and closer to that line. It looks like it's getting closer and closer to that line. So that's what we want to look for is where does it look like the graph is getting closer to? And also a key point we might want to keep in mind is 1, 1. But with the reciprocal function, we might also want to know maybe like a half 2 or 2, a half. Okay, so what do we look for when we're talking about transformations? There's three basic types of transformations. There's shifts in the graph. We can have a vertical shift, moving the, meaning the graph moved up or down. We can have a horizontal shift, meaning it's moving left or right. I think I did that backwards for you, left or right. Uh, so those would be shifts in the graph. We also might want to look for reflections. We can have reflection about the y-axis. So a reflection about the y-axis, right, that would be if it reflected about this line. So um, for example, the absolute value function, it actually has a reflection about the y-axis. So if there was a reflection about the y-axis, we might not actually know about it. Um, or a reflection about the x-axis, so that would be our absolute value if it opened up down instead of up. And the last thing we're going to look for, and these are going to be the, the trickiest to, to find, are the stretches and the shrinks. If it's narrow, narrower, then we say that it's stretched. So narrower just means that it looks like it got taller. And if it's wider, that means that the graph shrunk. So we would call that a shrink, and that would be if it kind of looked like it got wider. Let's look at some examples. So here are six examples. What I want you to do for each one is state the parent function and describe the transformations of the changes that you see. Pause the video, try each one, and we'll talk about each one separately. Okay, first we have our parabola, our quadratic. The parent function for this one is, say it with me, Except I did y, y equals x squared, or f of x equals x squared. So this is the parent function here. I just I have that so that we can kind of see if this shape looks the same, because that's going to help us determine if there's a stretch or a shrink. As far as I can tell, so this, this point here, the vertex, is at uh, 0, 0. Here it looks like we took the graph, we lifted it up, and we scooted it over three units. So we say that it shifted uh, horizontally three units to the right. So we, the graph is shifted to the right three units. Otherwise, I don't think there's anything else. We, we have, you know, over one, up one, like we see here on that parent function. It's not opening down, so there's no reflections that we're aware of. So that would be the only transformation for this graph. Okay, how about this one? Say it with me now. I think I did f of x for this one, so say it with me. 
f of x equals 1 over x. This is our reciprocal function, the reciprocal function. So again, here's the parent function. This is the graph of 1 over x. How is this graph different than that? So remember I said focus on the fact that we kind of have these things here at the zeros. Well, we still have it here. I see it looks like the graph is kind of avoiding the, the y-axis, but it, it's no longer avoiding the x-axis. It looks like it's shifted down two units. So we would say that the graph has moved down two units. We also want to see if there's a stretch or a shrink. I, I don't think so. So we see, you know, we have this point here, which moved down two units, which would have been this point here. And then the next one here, one to consider is a half two. So that would be if we went over a half and then it should be at two, but it's moving down two, so it should be right there. And it stop that. And it is, so I don't see a stretch or a shrink for this one. Also, the graph looks like it's the same uh, shape, right? We have like, if these were quadrants, we have one part of the graph in quadrant one and one part in quadrant three, just like with the parent function. So that indicates to us there are no reflections. All right, our next one, this is our absolute value function. And what's the parent function for that? f of x equals the absolute value of x. This was the parent function here. This is what we're looking at that we were given. I see a few things happening. First, it looks like it reflected. It reflected about the x-axis. Um, also, it looks like the graph shifted. So first, it got flipped upside down like that. Then it looks like it went four units to the right, and it looks like it went up one unit. Uh, talking about stretches or shrinks, this graph should go over one and up one, or in this this case, because it got flipped, it would go over one and down one, and that's exactly what happened, so there's no stretch or shrink to this one. So first, it reflected about the x-axis, then it was shifted four units to the right, and then it shifted up one unit, giving us this new transformed absolute value function. Okay, so what do we have here? This one is a cubic function. The cubic function has the, the parent function is y equals x cubed, or f of x equals x cubed. First, we want to check for a reflection. So it looks like the shape is going the same general direction, down to the left and up to the right, so we have no reflections. What I do notice is that we have this key point of 0, 0, and now that key point is over here at negative 2, 0, so that means the graph shifted two units to the left. It didn't move up or down, right, because the, the y-coordinate is still 0. The next thing we want to check for is if there's a stretch or a shrink. Uh, from our starting graph, we would go over one unit and up one unit to get to the next point on the graph, and if I do that here, I go over one unit and up one unit, I don't, I don't reach it. It is uh, a little bit further out and same if I go down. So we can see that it's a little bit wider than the parent function, which indicates to us that there is a shrink. Because it's wider, there is a shrink. And just to compare, uh, I graph the two together. The purple is the parent function. So this is f of x equals x cubed. And the orange and green was the, the given function in this particular picture. And so you can see it's a little bit wider, which indicates to us that there is a shrink. Okay, what about this one? This one is a square root function, and its parent function is f of x equals the square root of x, or y equals the square root of x. Uh, first, I do see a reflection about the x-axis, right, because this graph is going up, and this graph is going down. So there's a reflection about the x-axis. We also have a starting point here of 0, 0, and this one went to the left one unit and down two units. So we want to say it shifted uh, left one unit and shifted down two units. The next thing we want to look for is whether there's a stretch or a shrink. So to get from the first point to the second point, I went over one and up one. I want to do the reverse of that because it flipped over. So I want to go over one and down one. And if I hit the point, then there's no stretch or shrink. So I start here at, at this new starting point. I go down one into the left one. I hit a point, so that indicates to me there's no stretch or shrink on this graph. The last graph, we have a parabola, that's the shape. It's a quadratic, and that parent function is y equals x squared, or f of x equals x squared. We've got a few things going on here. First, the graph is opening down, whereas the parent function opens up, so that indicates there's a reflection about the x-axis. Next, I see that we're not, that, that tippy point, the vertex, is not at 0, 0. It's right here, which appears to be at a half, and then up 4. So we went 1 half units to the left, and we went up 4 units. And lastly, we want to see if there's a stretch or a shrink. So I should be able to go over one unit, and on the case of the, the new one, I should go down one unit. I have to go, let's see, if I go over one, uh, down one, over one, nope, I'm a little bit wider. The parent function is a little bit wider than this graph because it's the, the given graph 
is narrower, that indicates that there is a stretch. Um, so it has a stretch because it's narrower, right? And here, don't worry, I have it. The blue is the parent function. Blue is the parent function, so that's f of x equals x squared. And the green is the one that was originally there. So you can see it's a little bit narrower. The green's a little bit narrower. That indicates to us that there is a stretch, it's being stretched. And those are just some examples of describing transformations of parent functions. Thank you for stopping by.